Hi there folks, welcome to Dunsey's Guitar Stuff and welcome to a confession. Like many of us, guitar players, bass players, keyboard players, probably drummers, I don't think singers because singers uh, probably don't own a microphone most of the time, but uh, anyway, musicians wise, gear acquisition syndrome, gas, we've all got gas, so we buy too much stuff, buy stuff we don't need. But there's another thing which uh, we don't talk about much, RSI, now I don't mean repetitive strain injury, I mean regret selling instruments, we've all done it, we all look back at pictures and see um, guitars that we owned that we think, why did we sell that, that was brilliant, and another thing, regret buying instruments, RBI, I don't know if that's a a disease. I look at guitars and think, oh man, I had the chance, I had the chance to buy one of them once and I didn't buy it. My life might have been complete if only I'd bought that guitar. So anyway, today I'm going to introduce this new series by discussing both things. Discussing one, a guitar which I sold, which I wish I hadn't sold, and two, a guitar which I didn't buy and I wish I had bought. So, the story is, in 1986, uh, I had been playing guitar for, I don't know, four or five years, and I'd managed to save up enough for um, my first Les Paul. Now, I always wanted a Les Paul. Um, Joe Perry, I used to see pictures of Joe Perry and Aerosmith and thought, black Les Paul, you know, that's cool, 70s Aerosmith. Um, or vintage Les Pauls, you know, bursts. I wasn't going to afford the burst, to be honest. I wouldn't afford a burst now, even if I sold my house. So I thought, yep, a Les Paul. So I phoned a local music shop, and they had two, two for sale. Two used ones, they probably had new ones. Um, but the two used ones, because I'd saved up £500. Now, £500 in 1986 took me a lot of saving, might I tell you. It took a lot of saving. So, there I go, drive to the music store, and they have two Les Pauls. One is £525, and the other one, slightly older one, was £575. Now, that was going to be a bit of a stretch. I had my girlfriend of the time with me, who, who to be fair, was very kind, and uh, she suggested if I went for the 525 one, she would loan me £25. If I really wanted the 5751, um, you know, I could come back and get it. And I played both guitars, and uh, I chose a cheaper one. So let's, di let's discuss what they were. So in this picture, which I took um, 1987, maybe 1988, is our two guitars. The one on the left, is an early 70s Les Paul Deluxe Gold Top. That's a terribly sad story for another day. The one on the right is a black Les Paul Custom. Now, I don't know if you can see, um, but the hardware is all, all nickel. Now, now, I've watched some stuff on YouTube, um, Trogley's Guitar Show, which a guy who knows an awful lot about Gibson guitars, um, said that occasionally the factory would do just a run of uh, of nickel hardware guitars, um, so perhaps perhaps this is one of them. So if you look at the next picture, so there's me playing this very guitar um, with a, a yellow strap. I don't know what was going through my head. In fact, the yellow straps actually attached to the uh, Les Paul Deluxe, which is behind my back. Uh, the red straps on the black Les Paul. I don't know what's going on here, but I don't know if maybe seen a picture of Joe Perry with two guitars, and I must have thought that was a good idea. But you know, the curtains date this to about 1968, but it's actually about 1988. There's me again. Um, not sure what's going on with hair there, but as you can see, it's still got the um, chrome hardware. Um, Marshall stack. Another one. Still got the chrome hardware. Now at some point I must have changed out all the plastics to, to cream because I've now got a, 
cream poker chip switch tip and pickup surrounds which I think looks pretty good and at least by this stage I've moved on to using a Gibson strap now here's, here's the same guitar um, the one on the left there the one on the right is a 70s Les Paul Custom again another terribly sad story for another another day and that's my Marshall gear there was a JCM 800 um, 2204 I think sitting on top of that so that, that was my joy there was touring gear and as you can see dear oh dear I must have just went crazy with, with stickers on these guitars Thunderhead Joyriders, Black Sabbath and I think that's a Music Ground sticker who were a shop in Leeds and Doncaster where I, I bought a couple of vintage Gibson guitars I think that's a Boss ME10 which dates us to 1991, something like that so there's a the headstock beautiful Les Paul custom if we zoom in to the serial number it's 88062 let's put that in 806 what was that 806 23542 23542 let's see so this guitar was made on the 3rd of March 1983 now I've seen other Les Paul customs with the tuners where they've got the bit that comes out at the end fast wind sort of tuners um, but this definitely didn't have them just normal Gibson branded tuners made in the USA stamp so yes uh, that's the back of it there now funnily it, if you look here there's not a volute on the back of this um, so I don't know if this is like a 68 reissue or something like that not entirely sure I haven't owned the guitar for some time so um, I couldn't say so there it is again so I used this guitar live for about 10 years Here's the Joyriders uh, sound checking at the Glasgow Barrowlands Oh, there we go Still got the black pickups around at that point I'll tell you what, I'd kill for that here again um, So yeah, I used this guitar for 10 years This and a few other Gibsons as well um, But this was a guitar that I always thought I would keep until about 1996 um, what happened was I left work and decided to uh, to go to college and I did of all things violin restoration or it was technically stringed instrument technology so in order to finance that I had to sell to sell my gear and uh, one of the things I sold was uh, the Les Paul now I think from memory I'm sure I sold this for not much more than I paid for it. I think I sold it for 550 quid or something like that. Which is, uh, I still can't believe it. It still hurts to this day. 550 quid. Um, I've looked online at various things and uh, these go for, I don't know, two and a half thousand pounds or something like that. And I sold it for 550 quid. So that's my, uh, that's my sad tale of selling things that I wish I still had but it gets worse because going back to the beginning of the story the the other guitar that they had was as I said a Gibson Les Paul and it was £50 more expensive it was um, 575 quid so if we look at what it was 20 and 2060, you, you should have gone for the ball. Oh, it's, it's, I'm sorry, it's painful for me to say it, but I've got to say it and I've got to show it to you. Have a look at what you would have won tonight. Just have a look at it. Come on, come on. It was a mid 70s Les Paul Deluxe Blue Sparkle for £575. I was so desperate to get a Les Paul that I, I didn't want to come back and I thought. You know, 525 for for the black one. You know, that seems like a good deal, and it, w it was a good deal. But 575 pounds 
1986 prices for a mid 70s blue sparkle Les Paul Deluxe. Now I'll put a link below to um, to Trogway's guitar school where he he even described this as his sort of ultimate dream guitar. Now my understanding uh, the proper colour is called basalt blue sparkle. Um, there were 231 made between 1975 and 1977. Now I didn't buy this. Now I've recently seen these go for three and a half, four thousand pounds and I could have bought it for 575 quid. So I have some serious regret about not buying that. It's it's one of these guitars that we think, if only I'd owned that, you know, I could have bought it. But the reality is, if I had have bought it, I would have ended up selling it at some point. But, you know, there's always that thing at the back of your mind where you think, you know, if only. So, there we go, that's a tale of two guitars. The first one, a guitar which was my very first ever Les Paul. I've had a few since then, but, but that was the one that I thought, you know, I'm, I'm never going to sell this. And I sold it. And the second one, a Les Paul, which every time I see one on the internet, I think, damn, I wish I owned one of them. So there we have it. A couple of tales of regret. But uh, we've all been there. We've all been there, so... Uh, feel free to, to post in the comments about gear that you've sold, that you wish you'd never sold, or gear that you've seen pictures of, or that you've tried playing, and uh, thought, you know, I should have bought that. If only I had another 50 quid, I could have bought it. And here you are, 30 years later, still regretting it. So anyway, on that happy note, thank you once again for, uh, for watching. Uh, hope you like this new, new type of video. Um, tune in next week for more more tales of regret cheers for now